Welcome everyone to the Target Forge channel, where through the magic of YouTube, we are able to bring you another wonderful episode of the Airgun Geeks podcast. My co-host, and actually the creator of the Airgun Geeks podcast, Patrick, is going to kick this party off with a wonderful introduction and let us know what this episode is all about. <laughs> And welcome to another episode of the Airgun Geeks. This one's on the road to RMAC 2022. Bill, how you doing? Fantastic, Patrick. It's a bit warm here today. The last couple of days, uh, I think yesterday we hit triple digits, which in my area doesn't really happen very often. So it's been it's been pretty dang warm. Wow. Yeah, today it was almost 90 by us. Wow. It was... <sighs> supposed to be in the 90s this week coming up but we will be in our mac where i don't know what the weather's gonna be i don't either i haven't looked <laughs> so this this is uh this is gonna be crazy because we've been doing a lot of talking and figuring out what we're gonna do what we're gonna say who we're gonna try and get i'm seeing all the we're on the road pictures and videos on facebook yep. and i'm like Oh boy, looks like everyone's going to be there this year. So it's rather exciting. Very much so. And, you know, a, a lot of these higher profile YouTubers, um, you know, they have to insulate themselves to some extent just because they're getting input and contacts from everybody. So being able to walk up to them and make that personal introduction and say, hey, we've got this really cool podcast. Would you like to come play? Mm -hmm. And we'll set everything up. We'll send you the link. Just tell me an email address or a, a phone number to send that stuff to. We promise not to harass you. We will do everything <laughs> we can to make this as easy as possible for you. And um, that's going to be, I think, that's going to be big in getting some more diverse talent on the podcast. I totally agree. And, you know, I didn't think it was stressful enough trying to figure out what to do, how to do it, where to go, but I decided to sell the house and move. <laughs> so my lighting is not all that good right now, but we finally got it all done today. And then I'm going away for a week. So needless to say, Bonnie loves me right now. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> oh. You know, it, you, the, the two most stressful points in the average human being's life are moving and divorce. Mm. And you're flirting with the second one. I, 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 um, I know we're, I don't know if I'll make it up to 10 years, you know, which is, which would be this year would be our 10 year anniversary. But uh, yeah, I know it's like, oh. You know, try to make sure that the other house is all cleaned up for the new owners and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then realizing how many air gun stuff do I have? Oh, and then yeah. Bonnie saw it and I'm like, two Tacoma truckloads. Wow. And a quarter of that was lead. <laughs> wow. Different calibers. I'm like, oh my God, I have so many pellets. And then where did this gun come from? Hmm. Yeah, forgot about that one. You know, so it, it's been a good time, but they've all been uh, sort of put away for now. And then when I come back, we'll get them all in their proper homes. So, but, um, so I know you were at RMAC last year. Is there yes. anything that I should be preparing for or should bring? Um. Don't bring anything that you want to have clean when you leave because the dust at our Mac, at least when I was there last, uh, I'm still cleaning our Mac dust. As you saw yeah. at the Midwest <laughs> air gun show last week, I, my cash box for my table setup still had our Mac dust on it. Yes. I'm a terrible housekeeper. I'll, I'll give you that. Uh, but that stuff is it's magnetic it does not it does not come off easily and so, while we're, while we're on the midwest air gun show real quick i want to make a couple of clarifications 
because my my boy Joe Dorian um, has has given given me some corrections on some of my namings for things that he introduced me to while I was there. One of them was my boy Henson right here, Joe. <laughs> I know his name is Henson. I called him Hendrick on my Facebook page and I blasted it out on Instagram all over the place. This poor guy is going to end up with a uh, identity crisis and I don't want that to happen. His true name is Henson and he's not an iron eagle owl as my friend Patrick misled me. He is an eagle owl um, like Eagle Scout. Um, mm. So just just want to I want to set the clear the air with Joe and let him know that, that we all love him and uh, and we want to make sure we get the facts straight because we're so far really terrible journalists. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fake news, fake news. Yeah. Yeah. That that was such a good turnout. And then um, Chad from Airgun Advisor put out a lovely video. Yes. Um, it, it, it was a, it was, I was, I was shocked on how it went. Flat broke air gunner also did a killer video too. Yes, he did. Yeah. You beat me to it. Yeah. And, and, and to get to meet him was also cool too. Yeah. And, uh, Joe graciously, um, donated the time and people were given donations to take a picture with, uh, Henson, the Eagle owl. And, <laughs> uh, he behaved himself. And so did the people. Uh, Joe, I don't know if he behaved himself, but I think he did. He did. He did good. Um, what else? Uh, I think we asked everyone who's going to RMAC. So we'll see. We'll see what goes on. So I get to pack up and find clothes out of a box, mm -hmm. jump on an airplane at 10 o'clock uh, tonight, because you guys will be hearing this Monday morning. So 10 p.m. Eastern Standard, I'll be on an airplane heading to Denver from Cleveland and then sort of sleeping in the airport at Denver and then jumping on another airplane and hopefully crossing paths with you, Bill, and jumping in your, uh, your Tacoma. Oh, no, you have a Tundra, right? Yes, but I'm not going to be in the Tundra because if I took the Tundra to Armac again this time of year with the seven-plus dollar a gallon fuel, um, Toyota trucks are not known for their mileage <laughs> they at all. Yeah. And mine is a 2001 Gen 1 Tundra. Oh, uh, that would mm -hmm. not be a good idea to drive that car. Uh, unless Patrick was funding the fuel, then I, I would be okay. With it. <laughs> but, I could, uh, it's a hundred bucks to fill my Tacoma. No, that's okay. <laughs> my, my wife's mother took her on a cruise uh, of European cities really a, a cool cruise but uh while she's gone i get to play with her hybrid and Ooh. i'm going to be taking the uh the little little hybrid to pick up patrick it's gonna it's gonna be tight i you know i've been wrestling with whether or not to bring the solar charger set up to set it up and let people use it to charge their equipment while they're there mm -hmm. um i'm not going to bring my compressor because i don't I don't want somebody to say, oh, my God, I would have won that match had I not filled up with air from that guy's compressor and my yeah. regulator stuck. I don't I don't want to be responsible for that. Um, I know it's the coward's way out, but I, I absolutely believe in the compressor. I just don't I don't I don't want to accept that responsibility. I would love to, um, but I am going to bring it so that people can charge phones and any electronics that they bring. Um, if I can fit it in the car comfortably and still leave room for Patrick, uh, <laughs> yeah. which, you know, thankfully Patrick's not a really big guy. Mm -mm. So I can, I can squeeze him in like, you know, partly over the seat, you know, maybe there you go. in the upper, you know, in the airspace along the top of the load might be able to fit him in there, but I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get, we'll get you there comfortably. I'm, I'm actually, it's uh according to the to the magic google lady that trip is 11 hours and seven minutes for me oh i'm gonna throw down the gauntlet and say i'll make it in 10 um 
I I don't I love long drives. I throw an audio book on my phone and and I just I just jam and I when I stop I literally get fuel. I have water in the car. I've got most of my my food that I need for the trip already in the car. So I'm not I'm not stopping for anything but fuel typically. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe a maybe a restroom break once or twice on the way there but I I like to make tracks and I like to get there quickly. I I don't drive as fast as your previous um your previous co-host on the mm-hmm. weeks. <laughs> but but I I try to keep my my average speed right where I'm not going to be noticed by mm-hmm. the, um by the nice police officers that do a great job and uh, and shouldn't hassle me on my way to Utah nudge nudge um, I hear you <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know I I am I'm stoked to be back at Utah Air Guns um you haven't you haven't had that experience yet and to me um going to utah air guns and i'm going to bring the toy that i got at the um, midwest air gun show i'm going to bring that with me Um, because interestingly enough i i tried to just spurn some discussion on a topic that I didn't think was a hot button topic, but apparently uh, I walked in the room and there was already blood on the floor. <laughs> and I didn't realize that, that I was stepping on a, stepping on a landmine, but I, I simply asked the question, you know, what was behind the uh, Hunter field target pistol class rule that you could only have um, 12 power magnification on your scope. I get that you don't need more than 12x at 30 yards. I mean, that's even pretty generous in my mind. Um, and I, I just asked the question, you know, because the if you look at the rifle rules for hunter field target in, in AAFTA, they allow you to have whatever magnification the scope is. It doesn't matter. You just have to, it has to have a 16X mark and you you can't have it set any higher than 16X. And the nice thing about that is that it really opens up the market space for scopes. I mean, you have a, a lot to choose from. And I thought, why not have that rule written the same way for the pistol class? And man, it was like a, a lightning rod. And what really struck me as uh comical in all of this was that people weren't reading the the question i was asking they all jumped to why do you need more magnification in pistol class and i'm like i that's not what i said (laughs) at all i i wasn't saying that there needs to be more magnification in pistol class i just said we need to open up the availability of optics because I don't know, Patrick, you, you get to see this in a lot more light than I do because you, you, you work in the commercial side of this business directly. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when I, when I was looking at scopes and I was looking at what previous winners in those, in those events used, um, I'll tell you 80% of those scopes aren't made anymore. And I thought, Mm -hmm. I thought, well, you know, what is it about 12x scopes? And what I saw was that the the market availability of optics with a 12x limit is really, really shrunk. In the last 10 years, that that availability of units in that class has shrunk. And there really aren't any scopes that I would say yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> and it's limited at 12x. Um, and one fella, and I, I still owe him an answer on the uh, on the Facebook page for Airgun Geeks, and I will get to it. I've just been thinking about how I want to word it. So I don't, I don't engage someone in another, uh, another uh, discourse on, on why I'm <laughs> yeah. silly. But um, 
you know, he asked what, what scopes are you looking at that you would like to see included? I'm like, well, I'll tell you what, I, I have an Optison EVX and I actually put it on that HW44. Yeah, it's a rifle scope and it looks absolutely ridiculous sitting on that pistol. I mean, it, it looks, it, your son would love that gun because it really <laughs> looks like something right out of Star Wars mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, with that monster optic on it. And I got to tell you, that thing is amazing out to 30 yards, out to 35 yards for HFT pistol. Mm. And, you know, that's with it capped at 12X. Um, and, you know, a very wise person in the, in the uh, field target community early on told me that it was actually good to get a scope with more magnification than you're using because when you're at those lower indications, you're probably going to have really good image quality. Mm -hmm. The image quality Correct. gets gets roached when you get up near the upper end. And it doesn't really matter where that upper end is. It's just, you know, the manufacturers put in as the, the minimum amount of money to get you the maximum number of X's that they think you're going to buy. So those last, that last 30% of the range you're you're not really getting usable range out of that so mm, correct me using this optison evx which has really good glass i love the reticle in it um it's not legal i can't i can't use it in a match and you know i've got guys saying oh all you need is a bug buster that's all i use and i'm a i'm a champion and you know that's great i i i um have very similar thoughts about UTG as my, <laughs> as my friend Adam does. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I I've had them and I'm, I've never been really overly impressed with them. Um, you know, they're great inexpensive scope. They are, they, they do that just great. And they're actually pretty reliable, but um, I, I'm just, I'm not a big fan of them. And, you know, I'm not saying that everybody should run out and get an Optizon EVX. The only reason I have one is because I went to RMAC last year and Utah Air Guns put one up on the raffle at the banquet and my silly butt ended up winning it. And I thought, you know, I, I would actually use it on one of the rifles, but I actually set up both of the rifles with, um, with Element Helixes. And I liked them both being the same so that when I, when I got used to a process and everything, I was using the same optic and the same reticle on both rifles. So training mm -hmm. wise, I agree. Just, just made things easier for me. Mm -hmm. But I have to say, uh, in they're both very close in price. They're, they're within 20, 30 bucks, I think, of each other. At least they were when I, when I looked at them. Um, the EVX wins for clarity uh it just it's got a really crisp no vignetting around the edges it's a really really nice scope now i did find that there is a uh, one with a 30 30 millimeter objective from optison with mm -hmm. a 12x limit and one of the things the reason i'm bringing this gun with me on my trip to go pick you up is because I want to see that scope because Utah Air Gun says they have it in stock. I want to see that little Optizon on this gun on their range because the range is 30 yards. Oh, so okay. Very, very easily, I can uh, I can clip my little focus laminated sheet, which has the um, the film industry focus test patterns on it. I can put that on the target tram on Utah Air Guns range and I can send it back and forth and I can see how crisp that image is when I when I get it when I get focus on and I know it's not as important with pistol class um I'm well aware of that and really I have to say this HW44 shoots so flat that <laughs> Um, this Optizon scope also claims this, this little one with a 30 millimeter objective, it claims to not really need a lot of parallax 
correction because it mounts so low to the barrel. It's so close to the barrel that the amount of of lopiness in that trajectory that you see is not as severe with yeah. that optic. And I am thinking that if that pans out, it might be actually a really good solution. But you're going to be with me and we're going to test it out. We're going to see what's up and uh, and make the best decision possible. But if those rules were different, honestly, I would leave that Optison EVX right where it is and I would compete with that. And I know that there's um, uh, there's wind in the trees that suggests that uh, a ruling is coming in the upcoming end of the season uh, with the nationals in Puerto Rico um, that will possibly be a, a update to that rule. They haven't said what what direction they're they're leaning towards, <laughs> and in fact, the the guy who leaked that um, said he couldn't he couldn't comment one way or the other. But I hope that that they're bringing some reason to that. And I, I don't I'm not saying that the current rule is un is unreasonable. I'm just saying it, to me it disenfranchises the the shooter. Well, at, at least they're open to, you know, things change over time and, and whatnot. At least they're open to it instead of just like, no, like some sports are less like, no, no. So that's always exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Very much so. Very much so. You know, cool. So I know you had a couple other things you wanted to chat about tonight. You're going to have to remind me what they were. <laughs> Because I know that was, that was the one big one that I wanted to talk about. What else did I want to talk about, Patrick? I think we were going to talk about, ah, there's so much we talked about, and my brain is fried. Well, the first thing, since it's on my mind, is next Monday's podcast will not come out next Monday, first hmm. off. Well, it will come hard out. to have a podcast that comes out on Monday not come out on Monday, Patrick. Correct, correct. But there's, 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 there's a... An, ex an exception. Ah, very good. I'll be in RMAC <laughs> and I'll be just getting back. <laughs> and I want to make sure that all the audio um, from all the different people that uh, I'm going to interview, that we're going to interview, I should say, uh, get processed correctly. Mm -hmm. So the weight and the uh, tension, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Suspense. Hmm. will be worth it so it'll come out i'm thinking i should be able to get it out wednesday uh 1 a.m for our early listeners on the other side of the pond um you are aware that utah does have very good internet capabilities there right mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm kidding i'm just i'm but just my computer that does the fanciness uh, we'll be back in ohio ah yeah you, you know they have special bags for bringing those computers to places the wife won't let me. <laughs> She'd be computerless. Oh, yeah. now the truth. Emerged. Yeah, I got it. I the understand. most important person cannot go without the computer. I understand. But things are getting close. Maybe I'll get a laptop next year or something. We'll have to see how the podcast goes. I, I got to uh, tell you, I'm I'm on the fence. I would really like to bring my laptop and be able to at least get a a episode of of the target forge video content out while I'm there. Mm -hmm. um, but last year when I traveled with my really nice Lenovo um, laptop, I came home with a, with a broken screen. Mm. And I think it was absolutely my fault. I think I had a piece of uh, a piece of hardware or a screw sitting on the keyboard. And I, I went and slammed that, that top down and that was that was the end of it and what was funny was when i realized that the screen was broken it was like two days before my warranty expired oh and and i i called them up and i said hey my screen is really wonky and they're like oh send us a picture they're like oh yeah that that screen's definitely bad we'll we'll get a tech out there and get that fixed for you <laughs> and and you know, they came out and put one in and I didn't know at the time that it was a broken screen. I thought it was just poor display, but no. And I, then when I thought back on it, I'm like, 
I think I think I know when that might have happened. Um, but anyway, so not, totally not air gun related, but definitely air gun content related because. You know, at the end of the day, you and I need some computing power in order to do the things that we do. Correct. Correct. And I'm going to see if we can do any Facebook lives while we're there. Oh, that because would be fun. I don't know if you've looked at the group lately, but we're up to 721 wow. members. And I have a few I have to look at tonight. Um, the one thing I will say is, like you said last podcast, Please answer the questions. Um, yeah. They seem a little silly. A couple of people caught me spelling foul wrong or using the wrong foul, but that's just to see if you're reading. It's a little ha ha for me, but it makes sure that you're not a bot is the main thing. Mm -hmm. um, I do appreciate all the people that have been watching for people selling uh, all types of stuff. Um, Air gun geek swag will not come off of someone else's website i will make sure that you guys know when i have swag ready which will be soon very very soon mm -hmm. uh it's getting the website built in the e-commerce and i got a really nice lady um that i got that's doing it and i'll advertise her business and all that uh here very very soon but um thanks for um adminning you know it for me and, and bringing it to my attention i do appreciate it um and the conversations have been absolutely awesome. I've been looking at them. Um, and, oh, God, there's so many things on here. It's so cool. So make sure you check it out, Air Gun Geeks on Facebook. Uh, just answer questions, and we'll get you in, and then you can start chatting with everyone. So That sounds like fun. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's people from asking sub-12 foot-pound questions on mm -hmm. that side of the pond all the way to the big bore stuff and hey what's your opinion on this and everyone's been really cool it depends on you know what's your purpose that's yep. the big thing what is your purpose are you punching Absolutely. paper or are you you're, you know or are you hunting pesting what are, what are you doing because you don't want to go taking a 177 you know to go shoot pigeons at 50 yards well Not does that mean i should cancel my wildebeest hunt at the end of the month with my uh with my 20 foot pound 177 gun yes yeah okay all right yeah. I'll, I'll get on that yeah unless it's a virtual hunt <laughs> <laughs> then you got those special pellets but um uh, so what so let's see you know what i got in my email today what'd you get do you remember um a guy on youtube uh built a rifle cart for his friends in ohio and he gave them that cart a few months ago i vaguely you, you remember. remember that you remember that vaguely yeah um you know i i <laughs> did i did two videos on that build one one kind of talking about the choice of the cart and stuff mm -hmm. like that. and then the second one really digging into it and and getting to the roots of of what I thought was good design for, for a cart like that, that wasn't super tippy or had a, you know, had a good balance CG and all that stuff. And, you know, when you, when you create content like that and you push it out in the world and, and, you know, you might get some comments on the YouTube channel, like, Oh, that was really cool. Or thank you. Or, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's when someone takes one of your concepts that you introduced and i'm not i'm not claiming to be the guy that invented the bob cart as a rifle cart i i brought my flavor to it i brought my my skills to it and mm -hmm. made some 3d printed parts and and put that together and when that gets reflected back to you through the eyes of the of the viewer where they've taken your idea and they've done their little twist on it and and they're using it for a completely different purpose well still still a gun purpose this guy um and i'm going to put his pdf that he did on my website so that people can can download it and look at it because i think he did a spectacular job preparing this document i mean it's no joke it really the the amount of time he put in taking and editing photos and writing words to go along with them and 
it, it is really spectacular to see the level he took this to. And the reason that he took it to that level is because he's going to be presenting it to his local gun club mm. next month. So this guy put this PDF together to use as a as a screen walkthrough while he's giving his lecture on how to build a rifle cart. And I'm like, how cool is that? You know, That's this guy cool. this guy took that idea and uh, and ran with it. And uh, you know, he bought my he bought my fasteners for the three quarter inch conduit. Um, we got them to him, and he he put this thing together, and it looks fantastic. Guess what he's using it for? What's he using it for? Sporting clays. What? Sporting clays? Yes. He's got, you know, I mean, I don't know if you've ever shot sporting clays, but I have. Yeah. Most of those guys don't have cheap shotguns. They're, no. <laughs> they're, you know, they're Belgian Brownings. You see Parazzi's. You see, mm -hmm. you see a lot of really high dollar powder guns in that game. And, and this guy, um, you know, use my my basic framework and my parts. He he uh, he downloaded my 3D files from printables.com. He had a friend local to him that printed them for him, and then he he took and built his cart from that from that video. And I, you know, to me, it was a huge, um, uh, so wonderful feeling to see see your idea reflected back in the eyes of the viewer. And, um, you know, there have been others. There was a guy at, uh, at Midwest, the Midwest air gun show. He came up to me and was, you know, had his phone up and he's, he's going through all the photos on his phone to show me his build and what he did. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, that kind of stuff is just, it's fun to see. It's fun to see your stuff getting used. And, um, heck, I hope, uh, I hope, you know, 10,000 people order hardware for for that build and um, and make a bunch of carts because they really are great carts yeah it's good to see things come full circle yeah. and that's then that's and that's why we do what we're doing now you know get the info out links connect people networking uh very much just so. so that we can have fun you know it's not always about pulling the trigger most of the time it is but not all the time <laughs> you know it's the adventure like going from ohio to utah the yeah. adventure, all the people jumping in like Ken. I've been watching. I like watching Ken when he leaves Florida and he's heading to Utah in his big RV with his golf cart and <laughs> his his wife. And I think he's bringing the mules, the dogs, his Great Danes and stuff. And uh, just the adventure and seeing what they run into. Uh, I heard you talk to PJ Clark today uh or got a little message that he's on the road he is um, actually traveling right now the dude just got off a plane from from touring Europe. england yeah <laughs> and he is in a car on his way to armac that's that is air gun passion at its best right there yeah that was cool what him and his buddy did last year uh given their different segments along the trail to to armac that was that was pretty cool um do you know if John is traveling with him this year? I, I have no idea. I'll keep an eye on Facebook, but I have no idea. I meant to ask him uh, when he, when he, he put up some, put up a couple of comments that tagged me in on Instagram. And I, I, I meant to ask him if John was coming. John is a super nice guy. Um, he, uh, he actually would have been if, if target forge, uh, if it was in the cards for Target Forge to have been a sponsor this year, I can tell you that John would have been at the top of a very short list of shooters that I would have picked to wear the Target Forge colors and shoot for Target Forge. Because mm -hmm. when, when you sponsor, you get um, you get a spot or two um, of shooters. Uh, if you're if you're a if you're a sponsor that's paid before they open the the gates for uh for the rest of the shooters to sign up you can secure one or two spots at least that's the way it was last year and i'll tell you what john john was on that list and uh it'll be good to see him again or talk to pj and pj is a, a fantastic guy i can't wait to see him i actually have some very very special items that are air gun target related mm -hmm. uh, for him to test for me iron candy is what him i call and, it <laughs> yeah him him and tom adams both 
I want them both to put some uh, to put some pellets on this stuff. Um, one of the things that Target Forge has been wrestling with in a exceptionally challenging metals market, the steel market is is absolutely insane. Um, when we decided to push the Chinese out of the U.S. steel market, um, the U.S. mills were now over constrained. They could not produce um, metal fast enough to fill that void that not having the Chinese in that market space created. So unfortunately, they have discontinued. There isn't a, a mill in the U.S., at least that I'm aware of, that still makes 3 16ths AR500. They've just discontinued it. They're like, yeah, it wasn't, there wasn't enough market demand for it for us to not focus on all these other things that there mm -hmm. is market demand for. So it's not that it was unpopular or nobody bought it. It just, it became the small fish in yep. that pond. And um, I can't, I can't get 3 16ths AR500 anymore. So you know, it's not a big deal for my weldments because, you know, okay, you just substitute a thin piece of metal for a piece of metal that's one sixteenth thicker. Not, not a problem, right? Where it becomes a problem is in the uh, in the spinner targets because, you know, I've I've invested quite a lot of my own money in inventory of those stainless steel spacers and all of the pieces that stack up to make that fastener solution for the devil's eye high energy mm -hmm. and not having AR 500 anymore. I don't know how those things are going to react. And I've been traveling so much lately that I haven't had the time to devote to testing them. So um, we've got some special new shapes out. A lot of them have come from, uh, from customers requests. They're like, Hey, uh, I really appreciate these devil's eye high energy, but man, even that one inch, is a bear to hit at 100 yards. Uh, you've got to have a good gun and and a really stable, <laughs> a really stable rest to hit a one inch steel spinner at 100 mm -hmm. yards. They it really weren't designed for that range, but a lot of people like them out that far. Uh, but I have, I have created some other sizes that I think will will get people really jazzed on that and allow even more expansion into that. The whole concept of a organic 3D shooting environment, you know, in a wooded environment or even with some posts or, um, you know, local trees. Yeah, I think it'll be, I think yeah. it'll be a lot of fun. I love mine. I yeah. just, in fact, I just pulled my, the lower, the lower energy ones. I just pulled them out of the tree <laughs> as I moved. <laughs> and those were not easy <laughs> to get out of the tree. Uh, so. Hysterical. But uh, the, the, the one thing you brought up when we were at the uh, Midwest Air Gun Show, which you got to make sure you pound them all the way in to the yes. weld. Yes. I, the one I did not, and it was a little bent, but not horrible. It was maybe there's like a quarter inch sticking out, but uh, cleaned them up, bent it straight up. No good. We're, we're all, I should say, we're all good now. So but good. the big thing is, is they had light rust on them from yep. Ohio, you know? And I didn't lube them but once just because I was weird. I threw a little drop of ballast all in there and spun them and pounded them in the tree. So, yeah, I love them. I'd go out there and go pink, 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 go back in the house. <laughs> you know, that was my little therapy. And um, it was exciting. Do you know where the original Devil's Eye concept was born? No, I do not. Um, there were a number of videos out of England uh, that show their continuous war against the gray squirrel. The gray squirrel uh, got into England and it's considered an invasive uh, specimen or species there. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, all of our friends over there with their 12 sub 12 foot pound guns are, are just chasing these, these gray bushy tails um, all over the place because they do they do do a tremendous amount of damage to the trees and they're pushing the native species out of their environment so mm -hmm. they're very serious about hunting them and i saw some guys that had these little metal tags hanging off their squirrel feeders 
because what most of them do is they'll they'll fill up a feeder on the regular so they'll stop by every week or so and feed you know fill up these feeders and the squirrels get into that pattern and as you know as a pest elimination expert mm -hmm. it's all about developing those patterns with these creatures and you know guess what if you put peanut butter out at 9 p.m every night um and you go out there about four or five nights later you're going to have a whole bunch of rat shaped targets to deal with and it's a heck of a lot of fun um but you know trying to hunt for for pest animals can sometimes be uh they, they don't necessarily cooperate or you're going to create enough of a stimulus that they're going to run and hide um, mm -hmm. so creating an environment where they're you know they know that the food's going to be there at some time <clears throat> there's only going to be so much of it so there's pressure for them to get to the food early um, that creates a great opportunity to clean house on some on some vermin that's correct yeah and that's yeah. what that's what the original devil's eye was made for was hmm. to be able to drive that into a tree or into your squirrel feeder um right there so you can check your zero before your your hunting window and make sure that everything is good because as you know the angle that you're shooting has a profound effect on where your your point of impact is going to be so correct being yeah. able to verify that is really, really nice for not needing a second follow-up shot. <laughs> yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, I've watched a lot of uh, like the shooting show and stuff. I got the scroll feeder. I got the little devil's eye next to it. Yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, that's. Now, that's I will fun say their their devil's eyes are crap, and if you brought them to the U.S., you would shred them. Um, the first time you started hitting them with 20, 30 foot pounds. They would be mm -hmm. done. Um, my original devil's eye goes up to 30 foot pounds, uh, which I have to apologize because at some point we edited the text on the website for the listing for that. And at some point I deleted inadvertently the power rating for the original devil's eye, which Ooh. is 30 foot pounds. And I, I, I had a customer uh, last, well, it was two weeks ago, he sent me a picture and it was of a, of a devil's eye, a regular devil's eye that was ripped out of the tree <laughs> and bent. And he's like, is this supposed to happen? Is that how these work? I'm like, no, that's not how they work. I said, <laughs> what, what did you hit it with? And he's like, oh, I hit it with a 60 foot pound, you know, blah, blah, blah whatever it was. I'm like, well, there's, there's your problem. <laughs> I said, number one, like you alluded, you got to drive them all the way up to the taper on the weld so that mm -hmm. the spacer is right into the wood. And number two, you need to make sure that you have a good piece of wood. You know, dug fur, standard dimensional lumber works great. It really grips the shank of that nail. Um, but if it's a rotted fence post, um, it's not, it's probably not going to hold there. Mm. It is subject to the, to the quality of the wood, green wood, like most, most trees are amazing. Oak, maple, pine, any of those green woods are really good. Um, willow is terrible. <laughs> willow. I don't even know how willow got into the hardwood class, but that tree is more like balsa wood. It's, it's really awful. Anyway, mm. enough about that. So, so you say you say thirty foot pounds. So, is there a distance? Like, if they put it out at a hundred yards, can they do sixty? I'm just going to be devil's advocate here. If you're using a pellet, sure, because pellet. As, as you know, um, oh yeah, you know the ballistic coefficient of a quality slug. Gosh, especially these Patriot slugs that are that are coming. This Gen Two Patriot slug looks astonishingly good. Um, coupled with barrels that are designed for them oh my gosh that is going to bring a whole new level of accuracy to this game and you know we the difference being that the amount of energy you're going to retain downrange with mm -hmm. a slug goes way up you know the pellet the pellet is actually designed to have air brakes it slows down very quick 
and it's good. You know, people think, oh, well, that's low performance. No, it's mm -mm. it's great. It limits penetration. It, the, the fact that they don't carry forever is is by design. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm sure you know in your work, if you were to go and rip a bunch of slugs through some uh, through some muskrats and end up tearing up structure or creating a lot of damage, you know, for pass through and stuff like that, you probably wouldn't get called back on that job. Or God forbid you miss. Miss. Patrick. Miss. It says, God forbid, it happens every once in a while. <laughs> you know, a fish jumps up, some water hits it, it moves over. Uh, you know, they don't go as far. Yeah, you know, it's true. And it, it's 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 all about what's your purpose with that, definitely. Because uh, these air guns have turned into like shotguns. You can, oh, yeah. what I mean by that is ammo. So I like, you went right where I wanted you to with these Gen 2 Patriots. So <laughs> I, I, I've been waiting and watching and I'm like, Hmm, cause I'm a little bit of a Matt Dubber and Rolf fan. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what are they doing now? And, you know, with the new stuff that's going on with FX, with their power blocks and barrels and tensioning systems and all of the above <laughs> and some of the stuff we don't even know about. Um, these gen twos are very interesting. And on top of it, they're doing 25 and 30 cal. Yeah. I'm like, okay, but it's all about being, you know, proper cost per shot. It's like, cause it can get a little pricey, but you know, you're paying shipping and all that other stuff currently coming from as you know, pricey South Africa. as they are, they're still not as pricey as firearms ammunition right now. <laughs> they are not. No. And, 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 you know, make sure you check out the video on their Gen 2. It's really cool what they're doing. So it was an amazingly well done video. I mean, yeah. I, you know, Matt is no slouch in the in the video creation world. And no. I use the word creation because it's not that he's just good at editing. It's not that he's just good at photography. But he's effing brilliant at creating compelling beautiful stories that are a pleasure to watch that's the level that guy's on you know mm -hmm. one day i hope to be half of what he is uh in the in the youtube world uh and you know i i don't i don't deal with enough content that would get the kind of scope and and cinemagraphic view that he gets but uh yeah i I was blown away at the quality of that video. Yeah. I'm going to say, check out Ox Wagon Diaries. Oh, if you absolutely. haven't yet, definitely look at that. One, uh, Bonnie wants to go there. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that camp he goes to it and sleeping in the Ox Wagons and stuff. And then to go shoot the monkeys and all that. And definitely the current video, because now they don't have a drought, the river's running, everything's green. So that's really difficult to shoot stuff. But none, but nonetheless, you know, all the animals got lots and lots of food now. So, and, and I think uh, him doing those videos and, and talking about that, uh, that camp, that farm that he's on for the mm -hmm. X-Wagon Dyers, absolutely awesome. And then all the people I remember when he was asking for donations, they just flooded in. So it's, Matt's got a good heart and it's, I, I saw him. It was him, 22 Plankster, Rick Rem and Ted beer. Uh, I'm going to be oh, the Iraqi, the Iraqi, oh, Iraqi 8888. Yes. Yes. We're all in a picture down in uh, the Nashville get together. I don't know what it's exactly called, but I was like, they're, they're on this side of the pond. <laughs> and and those yeah. are some big hitters i should say yeah. big shooters yeah uh, right there in that picture and i was like wow that was that's that's good to see we're getting a little bit back to normal the new normal but uh, i'm glad to see that uh, matt's going to be at rmac ted's going to be there i'm going to see rick and all them i've i've talked to rick never met the guy uh but i can't wait even though he's a state over but it's going to be exciting. It's going to be absolutely exciting. So before we go, is there anything that's left that you think we should uh, tease the audience with or? I, I do. One, one thing I want to ask you, Patrick, 
how many M3 impacts do you think will be on the podium for bench rest? Three. Wow, you think it's going to be a sweep? Yeah. Wow, that's a pretty bold statement. Um, I'm not disagreeing with you, brother. Uh, I am not disagreeing with you at all. I think uh, I think the Impact M3 is going to do well there. I think it's going to kick ass in Precision Rifle as well. Yeah. I, I, with these tensioning barrel systems they have, it's game-changing. The, yeah. the only thing that that even gun the gunslinger you got me going if someone <laughs> shows up with a pump the pump action for the m3 uh it's over <laughs> that thing uh, is that thing's as fast as uh uh ted's hand oh tom adams hand tom with adams. Yeah. with shooting with that that daisy it's like a freaking yeah, automatic it's like a blur it's a blur <laughs> But uh, yeah, maybe they'll bring the pump back. I'm seeing it all over Aragon Nation. Speaking of Aragon Nation, I'm going to get to meet Michael there. But you got to check out Aragon Nation's new uh, website. Dude, it is I, completely I, revamped. That where I'm like a new guy going, where is everything? But did you notice what's on there? Did I notice what's on there? There I, is a link that connects podcasts. Wow, that's yes. awesome. Who's at the top? I'm patting my back. Thank you very much. Very, the very, well, Gakes. Done. very yep. well done. Yep. I, so, it's funny that you mentioned that because uh, when I got back from the Midwest Airgun Show, I actually tried to put a post up thanking all of my new friends in Ohio for welcoming me and, and, and making it, you know, just a wonderful mm -hmm. experience for me. And I tried to uh, post a picture of, of this guy right here and my table set up at the show. And it was like, I, I kept getting this error that I couldn't post a picture. I'm like, oh, what the heck is going on? And then um, I got a, I got a note from, uh, from moderator three, whoever oh. that is. <laughs> I, I suspect it might be Michael. Um, but I, uh, I get a message saying, um, Hey, uh, don't worry. the The photo upload will be will be fixed tomorrow. The new mm -hmm. version of the site is launching, and I'm like, "Well, now this is interesting." And I have been back to look at it. I haven't been back to actually post those pictures. I was able to post them because um, uh, I have a, a Google Photo account, and I think I was able to get a link to the photos posted there. But uh, yeah, that was really really cool. It looks like it, it it seems to work much more crisp. I agree. Now I it's agree. Like it pops. Whereas before it was kind of like, do you remember the old yellow page? Oh yeah. Oh man, it was like you know, waiting, waiting, you the swirling meatball, you know, like is this page gonna load or what? And uh, yeah, it's definitely popping now. Mm -hmm. I like how there's the the members rating is right up there you could see where they're at as far as the rank i'm still i'm still working on understanding it but instead of having the search for a member because you know it's scary dropping money across paypal or venmo mm -hmm. you know you, you you start dumping a grand and you're like hopefully they send it <laughs> yeah you know kind of thing um and, but so you're so you're sitting there looking and whatnot you know and it's you know i just did something with uh i think it's bin tin big tin boat great guy you mm -hmm. know uh he's like yeah 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 look me up no problem blah 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 packages stuff correctly make sure i said oh, i'll give you a good rating you know just so that everyone else knows it's i push everyone to the to air gun nation it, you have to it's 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 literally the mega the metropolis of the air gun world everyone's there you know yeah. if you want to know something don't ask a question and not expect them you know 100 answers <laughs> you know you're gonna well, you, you know answers. air gunners you could ask 10 air gunners a question and get 12 different answers uh, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah some people change their mind halfway through <laughs> so all right well um we got a very exciting week coming up we do I, I like flying on airplanes. I get to go to Utah. I get to meet all different types of people from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And then I get to come on here 
and tell you guys all about it. Fantastic. So keep an eye on the Facebook page. I'm going to try doing posts on there. Uh, Bill's going to be working as his target forge rep and assisting as a field reporter for the Air Gun Geeks podcast. Heck yeah. No, I, so, I definitely plan on being your co-host while we're there. Um, you know, I, I'm kind of limited with what I can do with with Target Forge while we're there because I'm I'm not a sponsor this year. Um, so I can I can walk around, I can walk a walk and talk to people, but I'm really talking to them as a YouTube creator more than um more than a Target Forge representative. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Well. Well, with that said, uh, everyone have a good week, a safe week. And like always, stay geeky. That's always fun. Very good. Very good.